Now, historically, I have been a pretty massive critic when it comes to those high yielding dividend funds such as QYLD, HYLT, XYLD, etc. And that's mainly because I do not find them to be stable over the long term. And if you are an investor who is looking for a high income dividend, but also want to maintain some wealth in your portfolio over a period that is longer than a year or two, then I've generally suggested that you shy away from these funds because in the long term, you're going to be wrecking your portfolio. And if your goal is to generate money, whether that be for retirement or you're trying to execute some sort of fire strategy, then these are definitely funds that are terrible for you. However, today I'm going to be going against that tradition on my channel. And I'm going to be suggesting to you one of these ultra high dividend funds. This one specifically has a yield over 11% as well as a declining capital value, making the fund extremely undervalued right now. And since the investment that we are discussing today is going to be a CEF, which differs from a traditional ETF, the NAV is also going to be a super critical factor that we are going to have to look into to determine why I'm thinking that this fund could be the next best investment if you wanna be able to increase the wealth in your portfolio, not just in the underlying capital value, but also if you wanna be able to take the dividend up to the next level. Now, the reason that I am making this change when it comes to the suggestion of this fund is mainly how it's been performing over the last few years. Now, this fund is powered by BlackRock, which means it does have a very strong and safe investment team behind it. And that makes me a little bit more comfortable in investing in this type of high yield, as I do have some confidence that the team over there does know what they're doing and is going to be able to make the right executions on this strategy so that it is able to maintain its profitability and stability well into the future. However, with that said, since 2021, this fund has had some pretty significant downturns. As of right now, the fund is actually 40% under its historic highs, meaning that compared to the rest of the market, it is down by a pretty significant metric. Now, on top of that, given that this is a closed-in fund, that NAV is also going to be super undervalued right now. And as it stands today, it is currently sitting at 10% under its net asset value. And this means that in the current market, there is a significant underperformance when we average this across the rest of the CTFs. And as a result of this, looking into the future, even though there might be some economic headwinds that this fund is going to have to contend with, over a longer time horizon, that dividend is going to be able to maintain its stability, if not increase even higher as the NAV continues to rise and rebound. But the underlying capital value is also something that is going to soar, potentially even beating market averages in the future. Right, so if that's gotten you excited, then the fund that we are specifically going to be discussing today is BIGZ, which is presented by BlackRock. It is a relatively historic fund for the company as a whole, meaning that there is a long-term historical background that we can look at when we're looking into the data in order to better understand the trend that this fund is projected to look like into the future. However, there is a bit of a caveat to the system as this fund has a little bit of a thematic difference than you're going to get with a lot of these other high yielding funds out there, specifically that this investment strategy for BIGZ is predominantly focused on small and mid cap companies. This is in contrast to what you're going to get with a lot of the other funds such as QYLD, which are primarily focused on those large cap companies. However, this is for a very strategic reason, which we are going to get into. Now, in addition to those small and mid cap companies, BlackRock is also placing a surprising amount of interest on another unique asset class, which is going to be private investment types, which are a lot different than you're going to see with a lot of those other funds out there. And as a result of this, we are going to have to be a little bit more careful of our analysis and how we actually go about predicting how this fund will perform in the future. However, it's not a total concern because it only comprises about 20% of the portfolio. So while it may be able to give an additional boost in positive markets, if something does go catastrophically wrong, it shouldn't be something that is going to be a total blow up for the portfolio. Now, as the fund differs in the types of investments that it uses in order to return this high dividend compared to a lot of those other ETFs out there, it does execute a very similar strategy in executing the standard call buy right strategy which seems to be the go-to methodology on how a lot of these funds are able to return those dividends that are in excess of about 10%. Now, you may be questioning why I'm suggesting this covered call fund over a lot of those others, such as XYLD and QYLD, and that's for a very specific reason, as hopefully you paid attention to in my previous videos where I've criticized the factors that go into why these funds are not really going to be successful for long-term investments, 
One of my primary reasons for this is how they've been following their respective indexes. For instance, RYLD is going to be following an underlying index such as the Russell 2000. And as I've demonstrated in a couple of future projections for the fund, this is something that can have pretty catastrophic errors when it comes to market returns in the long term. However, the difference with this BlackRock fund is that there is not any ties to an underlying market index. And this means that the investment team is able to select each individual stock in each monthly period. And this means that you're not going to have a lot of the problems associated with these other funds. And for this reason, I am more comfortable with using this fund as an investment for higher return dividend ETFs, mostly because I'm not concerned about the market in the economy as a whole. And I do have a bit of confidence in the BlackRock team to be able to make the proper call executions on the unique investments that they have chosen. Now, this fund also stands in contrast to a lot of those other funds in the investment avenues that it takes. The primary focus for this fund is going to be in the tech sector, which differs from a lot of the others out there. And as a result of this, there is more room for margins, given the extreme periods of volatility that a lot of these technology companies typically go through. So the way that this is broken down within the fund specifically, it is divided over 87 different types of equity holdings. And these include all different types of technology areas from cloud computing to telecommunications. And they are even diving into the biotech industry a bit, which is something that has historically been very risky. However, when you are operating this call right buy strategy option, this is something that is allowing them to maintain those pretty substantial dividend yields, given the amount of margin that they are going to be able to make on the swings of these transactions. It's also important to note that there is very little concentration at the top, like you get with a lot of other funds out there. Most notably that the top holdings all only equally comprise about 3% of the fund's total value. And this is something that is generally a positive in my mind when it comes to this strategy especially since each of these stocks is having its individual call option placed against that company. And this means that if there is a bad call option made on any one of these companies in a given month, it really isn't going to have much effect on the portfolio as a whole. And this is one of those key differences that you're going to get against XYLD, QYLD, and those competitors, is that when you make a bad call on the margin and options trades that you are getting on an underlying index, it's either gonna be positive or negative for the month as a whole as these indexes really have no way to hedge themselves in any given option period. Now with that understood, I'm sure that many of you are predominantly going to be concerned about the dividend yield, and more specifically its stability going into the future. However, before we do talk about that, I want to talk about the fund's underlying performance for a minute here, because this is something that is probably going to be the biggest red flag to a lot of investors out there, because on paper this fund is one that actually looks like it is performing pretty badly, where in contrast to a lot of other funds that are operating on these high dividends, they look like they are performing exceedingly well, even though their performance in the long term is actually gonna be pretty poor. And all this means to say is that it's really not clear based on the charts of how well these funds could perform in the future. And so this is something that is going to be very important to understand in making a good investment choice between all of these different high yielding dividend funds. So just to put it out there right away, this fund has performed pretty bad compared to the rest of the market since its inception, as the fund in total has lost over 40% of its capital value, as well as also had a decrease in its NAV of 33%. Obviously, these are definitely not positive numbers that you, any investor is really going to be looking at when they're looking for an exciting new investment to make the money as all this fund looks like it's doing on paper is going to be losing you money. However, this is a bit deceptive as this fund did launch in quarter one of 2020. This is in a pretty interesting time for the tech sector as a whole, as a lot of companies during this period were at all time high valuations, meaning that when the fund launched, obviously the net asset value for this fund was also going to be exceedingly high. So basically what I'm saying here is that the fund did get its start at one of the most overvalued times in the history of all market investing in something that was especially dangerous for the tech sector as a whole, which BIGZ is predominantly comprised of. So year to date, those numbers do look a little less bad, if you will, as the fund has only lost about 20% of its total portfolio year on year. But to put that into perspective, a lot of these other high growth tech funds have lost significantly more in the same period. So when we're talking about just losses this year in the tech sector, I would actually say that this fund is performing pretty well as a hedge against the total market environment, even though that is definitely not its strategy, as the fund is predominantly focused on generating that dividend income. So even though this fund has not performed exceedingly well since its inception back in 2021, this is somewhat to be expected given the horrible market environment that it entered into, 
as well as the relative beating that a lot of these high growth tech sectors such as ARK and even some of the other BlackRock trusts such as BST have experienced in the last year. Meaning that as a whole, I still expect that this fund's capital performance to be something that shouldn't be much of a concern. And instead, we should really be focusing on that dividend income and its stability. So with that said, let's actually take a look at that dividend now, which is currently sitting at just over 11% meaning that its total distribution on the dollar is coming in at 10 cents. So given that this fund is an ROC CEF, this means that this is going to have an extremely tax favorable advantage compared to a lot of those other ETFs, especially when it comes to dividend investing, as you're only going to have to pay those taxes at the times of realized gains, meaning that if you are someone who is interested in a drip program to rapidly expand this portfolio's value for a couple years until you maybe decide to live off of that dividend income, and this is definitely the best type of fund for that strategy. Now with that said, there is a legitimate risk to that dividend value being cut given the significant losses that this fund has had since its inception. However, when we get into the data, I do believe that this is something that isn't a big of a concern as it may present on paper. So as it stands, this annual distribution accounts for $300 million of the account's total value which is currently standing at about $5 billion, meaning that this is a fairly small fraction of the fund's underlying value. However, with that said, it does seem like this dividend yield is not going to be sustainable in another year or two if the market conditions continue the trend as they are, as obviously this fund isn't going to be able to lose its capital value forever. However, with that said, as a counterpoint to this, the fund actually did start out at a significantly lower dividend yield at only 6%, so somehow, even though they have been losing a ton of underlying capital performance over the last two years, the fund has managed to increase its dividend payout pretty historically. So although this fund may have to drop its dividend in the short term here for a few years until the market conditions improve for the tech sector, I can only imagine how this dividend is going to be able to increase. When the total underlying asset value also continues to rise, this puts us in the position to see some pretty significant dividend increases in the coming years if you are able to hang on and of course hanging on in this situation isn't really going to be that big of a hindrance to you given the tax advantages of those dividends that you're actually not going to have to pay them again until you fully cash them out so you could theoretically sit on this portfolio for a pretty significant amount of time and then be able to ride out any future coming short-term storms so that in the future you are able to access an extremely high dividend yield while being able to purchase a CEF that is below its NAV. So as it stands right now, given these current market conditions, I do think BIGC did enter into the market at a pretty horrible time. And basically since it's entered the market, there's just been one crisis after another, even in the form of commodities, which have somewhat affected some of those more unique asset classes that the fund is holding. So right now, I don't think we should be too concerned about the underlying value of the portfolio as a whole, given that the market conditions have just been so terrible. Now looking into the future, I think we should all anticipate that tech sector ETFs, especially those smaller biotech companies in the future, should be able to grow at pretty substantial rates. Naturally, this is going to give us a lot of margin to not only be able to increase this dividend yield, but also in maintain it across really poor market conditions. This is something that is not only going to allow us to maintain current dividend yields, but likely also raise them at a pretty substantial rate into the future. And this is going to be in direct contrast to a lot of those other funds like QILD, which I'm predicting, and as we're somewhat already seeing, is going to continue to lose money on its underlying portfolio value, and then be forced to continuously drop that dividend yield. So if you are a long-term investor looking for that higher dividend yield, then this right here is definitely a fund that might be of an interest to you. So let me know what you think of BIGZ down in the comments if you disagree with me and how you think that it compares to QILD and some of those other covered call ETFs. And with that said, guys, I will see you in the next one.